Good morning. Hope you enjoyed my Asian Cup video. Um, I was really tired uh, doing that one, so they are quite some speaking mistakes, but I wanted to get it in, so, and you know, it's as real as it gets. I usually don't cut a lot unless um, the camera breaks down or whatever, or I'm interrupted otherwise. Uh, what I want to talk about now is basically every, everything that happened like this week uh, match-wise uh, there were some cup competitions and most notably I guess the um, FA Cup and the Copa del Rey um, FA Cup were the replays um, I think the one result uh, uh, the one game that interests me most I didn't watch anything I, as I said uh, not yet um, but the one that I thought is the was the most interesting was Blackburn against Newcastle, which went to overtime. And now, if you think I'm only Newcastle, actually in the um, 90s, Blackburn and Newcastle were kind of my teams. Uh, probably Blackburn first because I was impressed how they became champions. I thought, oh, this is this great team from England. Uh, right up there with Manchester United. You know, I had no feeling for history, so, but I still remember Blackburn. That, that was a cool team. Uh, that I actually miss a little bit. I know when they were in the Champions League, I think that's when it kind of down down on me that they're not they're not great. I think they had a very miserable showing in the Champions League uh, that season, 95, 96. I think that was the one. Um, anyway, uh, game ended 2-2 uh, after regulation, and Newcastle got. Uh, two goals in overtime to go through. Southampton Derby County was, was another one, but I think Southampton had the lead Derby County equalizer and then penalty shootout. Uh, so though they are on to the next round and I think in the fourth round the marquee matchup is Arsenal Manchester United and but most of you know that by now. Copa del Rey uh, quickly was interesting um, because you know they have return legs and there were a few games that um, for of interest, let's put it that way. Uh, most notable since Levante beat Barcelona a week ago 2-1, so yesterday Barcelona played at the camp now. And yeah, this time they were not giving Messi a break, this time Messi played and Suarez was not playing, uh, but it was uh, Messi, Dembele and Coutinho uh, on the front. Yes, Barcelona dominated. Barcelona scored goals, although the first goal in 29th and 31st by Dembele were probably some of the scrappiest that he will see all the year. Both assisted by Messi. First one, uh, the cross by Messi was nice, but then uh, what Dembele, the defender, wants to clear. Uh, Dembele puts his foot in and then it's deflected by the goalkeeper so it was a really awful goal in a way and then um, the second goal uh, was also weird R again nice pass by Messi who just takes the ball off one of the uh, defenders who is just taking way too much time uh, puts it in Dembele uh, rounds the defender wants to take the shot but it was more like that he wants to uh, the shot was parallel to the goal line and I think it hits the goalkeeper's foot and then curls in. I don't think that's at least how I think is more possible. I, if if he made it with that much curl to go in, uh, chapeau, Dembele. But I really think the goalkeeper uh, got uh, got his foot or his leg onto the, onto the ball. That that it went in. Then actually a huge chance for Levante um, with a. Uh, 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 heel, back heel, uh, onto the two net, and it's the Levante attacker that is saving it for um, Barcelona. That would have made it 2-1, which would have meant over overtime. Second half, all Barcelona. Messi makes it the third one. Uh, my favorite was Messi missed also a chance in um, the first half where he was clear, clear and goal commentator said well uh, his left foot is extraterrestrial his right foot is just world-class and that's why he missed the chance uh, yeah. uh, by the way I think I saw a study yesterday that uh, puts the market value of the, the you know the three most valuable players 
and interestingly it is Neymar ahead of Mbappé, ahead of Messi. I still would take Messi over both of the two of them currently. Uh, for the future I think I understand it. So other results, yes Atletico Madrid went out uh, playing only 3-3 at home to Girona. Atletico, there's something not quite right with Atletico this season. Uh, and then they will eliminate Juventus, I'm pretty sure. Um, I think they were down twice, then they turn, turn around and Griezmann with a really nice goal makes it 3-2, uh, only to concede 3-3 and so on, away, away goals. Atleti is out. Uh, Real Madrid could afford losing 1-0, uh, uh, move on thanks to a 3-0 at home. Uh, I think, yeah, um, Athletic Bilbao and Sevilla played each other uh, once more. Athletic Bilbao won again in Sevilla, but having lost the first one 3 1, sees uh, Sevilla through. So, out of three games, Sevilla wins only one, but manages to advance in the cup. But, you know, in the league, it's the one. Uh, speaking of Sevilla, they have the big matchup at Real Madrid uh, this weekend. So, looking forward actually to that one. Probably choose that even over some Serie A matchups. Um, and then, yeah, there's also the little matter of Arsenal, Chelsea, Chelsea, or Arsenal. The, the, the two of them are playing. And then, yeah, we had the Super Cup uh, in Italy. Again, I did not even bother watching because honestly, I know the teams take it somewhat seriously. For me, this is a, a stupid thing. In the middle of the season, uh, played in Saudi Arabia, sorry. Uh, Juve running away, uh, getting the winner through Ronaldo, I think could have been offside. There was some dodgy refereeing, I saw there should have been a penalty given for Milan uh, to get an e to a potential equalizer. But everyone is talking about Egoin, of course. Um, that's the only thing. So Juve wins their first trophy, first trophy for Ronaldo. Again, those Super Coppers, uh, Super Cups, it's a ridiculous. Thing, honestly, especially if you played outside of Italy. Uh, but then, yeah, maybe that's a way to grow the game in Saudi Arabia or you know, the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, Iguain, yeah, my take is I would have liked for him to, uh, to stay. I, I overall like Iguain a lot. I really thought that he could do something, uh, give Milan the goals that they need. Obviously, he didn't work out that well. Most of it, I think, the Juve game really destroyed his confidence a lot. Uh, that was the worst thing for him. He missed the penalty, he got sent off. I, I think he completely lost the plot there. And from that moment on, I think he, he go in. Um, yeah, I think he could have gotten back. But look at the finances. He's extremely, extremely expensive. So I understand if Milan doesn't want to keep him. I really understand uh, that I think they would like to keep him as a player but not under those circumstances. Now if Chelsea has, and uh, Juventus kind of agreed on something, a very similar loan deal as for Milan and Milan trying to get a replacement, although I'm not actually sure if, you know, if Cotrone stays fit they probably don't need necessarily a replacement. I mean uh, they play them out but as badly I want to say with Egoin as they played without him. Uh, so I'm not so 100% 100 if it's really needed that they get a replacement, although it would be nice to have an extra attacker. Now, will it be Piontek? Yes, he's called Piontek, not Piatek, although that's how you write it. Polish pronunciation is one of the big riddles, one of the big mysteries uh, in Europe, I, 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 I would say, because you never get, you never pronounce it how it's written. I think in that case Polish is very unique. Uh, the deal with Piontek for me is that if he is as good as he is with Genoa, of course you would like to take him, but I'm not sure if this wasn't just a fluke run. I, I, you know, uh, Patrick Schick now at Roma, he, he was a similar uh, story. He was also at Genoa, I think, or at Roma. There he played great, uh, and then at Roma, mm, he is more or less an afterthought. So yeah, I would like, I, I would like him get a good strike. Don't get Morata. Uh, 
I think Morata's years, best years are behind him. Um, and yeah, being in at Chelsea, I think it's what Sarri wants. Because on the other hand, if you want to get a great Argentinian striker now, honestly, get Icardi. And that also solves a problem for Milan fans, because Icardi uh, can stop scoring against Milan. But that's a different story. I guess that's my roundup. Uh, yeah, I would have. Yeah, we can talk a little bit about Spygate, uh, Bielsa spying on Derby County and all the other teams. I think it's ridiculous this spying. I mean, I totally believe him. And he gains a lot of information, but this guy is obsessed. If you read anything about him, this guy is obsessed. He's watching soccer countless hours and he knows everything about the opponent. So, uh, him spying, getting an unfair advantage is ridiculous. Now, if there's a code of honor, blah, 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 yes, maybe, uh, but it's very squishy, very soft rule. So, I think. He might get away that he gets a that they get points deduction would be absolutely ridiculous and again i think it's because lampard is the coach of um darby county that this gets any traction this story i actually liked how he handled it i'm not sure if it's the best thing how he handled it he went straight out all honesty you know i did it because i don't think i'm doing my job because that's what he is used to do i mean uh, people are looking uh, in the latin countries People are trying to watch everything and they, they're way too paranoid about it. So Samsung, I guess, is a little bit foreign to the English game, although, uh, honestly, uh, don't be that naive. Uh, I think they're still doing it other times as well. It's just, you know, he's a foreigner, he's Argentinian, and he's doing it on Lamborghini. That that's where the story is coming from. But actually, I loved how he handled it. I mean, this press conf conference, 70 minutes of PowerPoint slide with all technical information about the, all the opponents, wonderful. Uh, but probably not helpful. That's the sorry state about it. But yeah, nice story. And I think I overall, uh, you know, uh, clash of cultures. Again, let me know what you thought about all these at A Cup Copa Italia. Yes, there was Liga 2 with, uh, I think the most notable things that can go is winning and Monaco is also picking up points. Fabregas, uh, it's nice. So, um, yeah, they still have, I think, some games to make up uh, because of all the Yellow Jacket protests. Um, but, you know, I also didn't follow that one too closely uh, this time around. Again, let, let me know in comments what you think about all of these games, incidents and so on. Give it a thumbs up if you liked that video and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more of these. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.